Hello and welcome to another Facts and Dimensions tutorial video. In this video I'm going to show you how to connect to a Snowflake database from within SQL Server Management Studio using a linked server. And the reason I'd expect someone to want to do that is if they have a Microsoft SQL environment and they have all their data in there and they want to connect to a Snowflake database and be able to query data from their own databases and then connect and then sort of left join or whatever to the Snowflake data all in one single query. So that's why you need a linked server. And the great thing about linked servers in SQL Server is that you don't, you're not restricted to setting up linked servers that connect to other SQL servers. They can connect to any server that uses ODBC, Snowflake being one of them. So I'm going to do that now and you can uh, copy me. Um, first of all, I would recommend going to signup.snowflake.com if you don't already have a Snowflake account. Fill in your details here, first name, last name, company name, um, role. You need to do that um, uh, fully so that uh, it's clear who you are. Uh, then click continue. Then choose uh, standard typically, and then you can always change it later, I think. Then uh, one of these uh, providers and then t read the terms and tick the box and click get started. Um, like so. Then fill in the surveys, skip, skip if you don't want to fill them in, and then at the end you'll get an email. I've already done this, so I won't do it again. Um, when that email arrives, click on the activate and it will take you to here. And sometimes a splash screen will come up with uh, some tips and tricks and you can just click on skip for now and then you'll be here, just like what I've got here with a button here with your free $400 of snow, snow credits and 30 days so you can play with Snowflake free of charge for a month. So once you're in here, um, you'll want to connect to the Facts and Dimensions database or whatever database you're doing this with, but if you connect to this one so as to follow the tutorial, um, go to data products, then the marketplace, and in the search type facts and dimensions, and then this should appear. Now, if, if for some reason you get a search uh, circle going round and round and round forever, I tend to find that if you click on browse data products and then go back here and type it again, then it works. Anyway, so click there. Um, at the bottom right here, you've got the instant trial access share. This has got almost all the same data as this one, just not it's just not including data sets that aren't fully open data. Um, this one you'd have to you'd get a button where you'd have to request and then we'd have to give you permission, and I'd have to get proof that you've got all of the other terms and conditions sorted out. Anyway, just to get instant access, then just go for this one. Click on that, then click get. Then click on this, that's got the terms and conditions for facts and dimensions data, which is primarily, although the data we're getting comes from public sources, the massive amount of work that's gone into organizing all the data into a single massive database is enormous. And we own what's called the database right. So in other words, you can't just connect to our database, download it all, and then say, actually, I don't need a license because yes, you do. If you want to get all the data yourself, feel free to go to the sources and spend 15 years getting it out just like we have, and it is not fun. <laughs> anyway, click get. So now I've got a new database in my Snowflake account. And it's I could have given it a different name, but it's named uh, the same as the, the listing. Facts and dimensions, all data. And uh, before I move on, I'll just give you a little appraisal of what sort of stuff we've got. Uh, all kinds of data, like you wouldn't believe. Um, don't even know what that one is area of work broadband that's uh, something to do with uh, who's got broadband access um, so all kinds of data in this uh, database that comes from all kinds of uh, sources um, actually if I show you our website just as, a, just as an aside if you go to this page here factsdimensions.co.uk product we've actually got uh, the catalog of everything we have and you can click plus next to any of the tables we've got and then and then click on the link and that takes you to the website where we got the data from. So here's an example. This website's got a bunch of data. We downloaded it all, put it into the database and every time we update it, we download it again the same day straight away and we just maintain it forever. 
and the database is getting bigger and bigger. Anyway, that's enough advertising facts and dimensions. So to get back to showing you how to connect to the data, um, you need to download the ODBC driver. So you can go directly to developers.snowflake.com forward slash ODBC. That URL came from this link. Uh, let's see if I can find it. This one, uh, the docs.snowflake.com. Uh, so there's all the instructions you need for installing the ODBC driver for Windows. Uh, I'm just going to do it on this video so you can watch how it's done. So uh, we went to download and then I went to ODBC download and that's what took me here. So I'm using Windows, so I'll click on this button and then I'll download the driver and install it. Uh, now, I've already downloaded it and I've already installed it. So download it, follow the install instructions. It's very straightforward. Next bit, go to ODBC driver, search for ODBC. Choose the 64-bit version, right-click, run as administrator. Okay, and then you get the usual ADBC data source administrator. Click on system DSN, click add. Then select the Snowflake driver that you installed earlier. There it is, click finish. Then this configuration dialog comes up. In the data source, just give it any name you like. I'm gonna call it Thad. Uh, in user, put your username. Uh, now, in this demo, I'm gonna use the user and password I created when I created the Snowflake account. That is the admin user and password. Now, obviously I shouldn't need to say this. You would need, you ought to, um, in admin, go into users and roles, create an appropriate user and use that user to get in, okay? But this is a throwaway account in Snowflake and I've just made just for this video. So I'm just gonna use the main account that I created for simplicity. Uh, so put in the username and the password. And in the server, go back to your account, click on admin, click on accounts, click on the three dots next to the account, manage URLs, copy the URL, and then paste that where it says server, and then remove the bit at the beginning where it says HTTPS colon four slash four slash, like so, and then put the number six in tracing. I'm not sure why I do that. I always have, I can't remember why. But do all that, click test, and you should get a success. Now, if you don't get a success, it may it will either be that you've put in your username and password wrong, um, or it could be that you've typed something in wrong somewhere, or it could be your firewall is preventing access. Um, if you get stuck on that, you can always get in touch. Click OK, click OK, click OK. Now, into SQL Server Management Studio, I'm going to create a linked server. So server objects, right click on link servers, new link server. Give the link server a name. I'm going to just call it FAD again. Uh, in the provider, choose only DB provider for ODBC drivers. And then in data source, give it the name that you gave when you set up the ODBC data source. I call it FAD, if you remember. So put FAD there. And in security, you'd probably use um, not to be made and then add your local Windows admin and all the rest of it. You, you know how to, I'm presuming you all set, know how to set up your own security and this is this video is not about teaching you about security. I'm gonna do the quickest one just for the purpose of the video, um, which is like so. Click OK. And there is that server, the link server called FAD. And in there, there's the database, the facts and dimensions, all data instance, instance trial access. And that database, by the way, only has views. So I'm going to expand views and have a quick look in there. And as you can see, there is all the views. At the time of writing, it's about 7,000 views. Uh, but that keeps going up and up and up. Now, you can't just simply query it like if, if it was a link server to another SQL database because Snowflake isn't isn't Microsoft SQL. It's Snowflake and it doesn't use T-SQL. It uses Snow SQL. Almost exactly the same, just a different flavor. So 
let's um, show you a little demo. So what we need to do, well, if I just show you it not working first, and then I'll show you how you make it work. So select star, you would normally expect to just do select star followed by link server name dot the database name dot the uh, view that you're interested in. Um, let's have a look at this one. And then run that and it won't work because it is not a SQL database. But in, in uh, SQL you have something called open query. That works like this. So we do select star from still open query open bracket then you do the name of the link server comma and then in single quotes you would copy in the actual snow sql so we just uh, write that snow sql now That's the snow sequel. So let's run that just to make sure. There's my data in in snow snowflake. Notice I've put the database name in there. I had to do that. I wouldn't have to do it here because I've selected it here. The reason I would have to do it in my uh, SSMS query is because if you remember in the ODBC connection. I did not put a database name or schema name or warehouse. And you can do that if you want to, and then that particular um, uh, uh, DSM will only point to that snow at that database. And obviously, there's good reasons for that, but I haven't. Uh, so, if I just copy that snow SQL and paste it here inside the single quotes, so I'm going to paste it right here. Then. I can run that. And there's the data. Now I could even make a view locally. So if I just get my local database and create view, um, I suppose I'll probably call it the same as this. Oh yeah, one thing to bear in mind with Snowflake, Snowflake is caps sensitive. So if you get the caps, the uppercase and lowercase wrong, it will just not find the, the table you're looking for. So I've created a view based on this. Oh, of course, I need to actually create that schema first, wouldn't I? There we go. And now I can just do select star from that view. In fact, if I select it here, then I can get the table, the, the, the uh, column names as well. There it is. Uh, select top thousand. See, there's all the, there's all the field names. And there's the data. So that's that. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind. Um, if I was to select from release details for all available tables, which is where our catalog is, a bit of a quirk with uh, mixing T-SQL and SnowSQL. So when I run it in here, um, no, it's not that. When I run it in here, all fine. But when I run it from here, so I'm just putting it in here like that. I get this um, problem. I'm just going to draw that because I want viewing it not. Okay. Where it won't work. I'll give it a few seconds to not work first. Because of the column issue. Now, um, the, that, that particular table in Azure has a length of as a varchar 4000 field that's got one of the a couple of the fields of varchar 4000 and fivetran the system we've used for replicating the data for snowflake uh interpreted that as the maximum allowed in snowflake which is like 16 million and it basically doesn't get that but it's fine this is the field that's the problem source db in this in this particular instance if you um cast it like that, or up to 8,000. Cast source 
I'm doing. Then it works. Okay, so you might have to do little things like that to get it to um, make the necessary join. And then of course, now you've got that view, you can then left join that to any local tables and go from there really. So that's so that's that. That's the main thing. I think one more thing that's worth showing. Um, I did make a video on Dynamic SQL uh, on the tutorials video, but I'll just show it to you here as well. Now, unfortunately, you can't just put the Dynamic SQL straight in here. Um, maybe you can in later versions of SQL. I don't know. Um, let's declare some Dynamic SQL. Dynamic Dasher Max Set at SQL equals this. Wouldn't it be nice if then this would work? It doesn't. But it's not a problem because what you could do is instead set SQL to be the whole thing, including the open query statement. So just copy all of that like that. And then obviously inside there, wherever, the, wherever you've got a single quote, you'd obviously have to put a double quote to escape them. And then you can just do exec at SQL. There you go. Right, I think that concludes the video. Thank you very much.